So let's talk now about the endovascular treatment of aneurysm. Like this picture depicts, it's the most gentle way to treat a very friable aneurysm a few days ago. So technically what we do is a guiding catheter is placed into the vessel that supplies the territory where the aneurysm is located. So if it is in the right carotid territory, we will have the guiding catheter in the right internal carotid artery. Then through this catheter, another micro catheter is navigated into the aneurysm with the help of a guide wire. Then multiple coils are gently packed into the aneurysm. Now the coils are different from what we use elsewhere because one, they are softer, they do not have any thrombogenic material attached to it and secondly, they are detached either electrically or mechanically after we are satisfied that the coil is placed correctly and it's not prolapsing outside. Coils come in different diameters and length which would depend upon the size of the aneurysm. So after the end coil is detached, we would put a second coil and then a third coil and this procedure would be repeated till the aneurysm is completely packed. Now this is the basis or the fundamental of an aneurysm that has to be coiled by the endovascular route. Now in reality, things wouldn't be this simple because a lot would depend upon the morphology of the aneurysm as we will be talking. Now this little slide by the side shows you the actual picture of a guiding catheter and a micro catheter how it would go through it. And this is how a coil would look. There are different shapes in the coil. It may be a simple helical shaped coil or it could be one which has got a three dimensional shape. So that would again vary and the choice would also vary depending upon the shape of the aneurysm and the size and the shape of the neck. Now what you have in the screen right now is a picture of what we call a road map. Now what is a road map? This is the, the basic guide that will be available on the screen. Now as we take a catheter, a micro catheter, a wire, that image is superimposed on the road map. Now that gives us a high degree of accuracy to know where we are going and for any neurointerventional procedure and especially aneurysm the road map is a lifeline. Without a good road map you are going to have big complications, you wouldn't know where you are going and thus this is an image to show you what a road map looks like. Look at this next picture. You can see a little dot that is inside the aneurysm. The little dot is the tip of the catheter which is inside the aneurysm. Now we know it's in a position to start coiling. What do we look before we plan therapy for aneurysms? One, we look at the location. Two, we look at the size. Three, the morphology. By morphology what we look is are there multiple lobes? Where exactly is the pseudo aneurysm or the daughter aneurysm component located? So we try hard not to push against that region. Then we look uh, at the actual measurement of the neck because we know today that a neck that is more than 4 mm has a high chance of recanalization. We measure the diameter of the fundus, diameter of the neck and find a ratio because if the diameter of the neck and the fundus is the same, the chances are that you will require additional hardware to do the procedure rather than the one that you saw in the previous slide. Then we look at the anatomy of the parent artery. Is this anatomy a straight or a simple one or does it have multiple loops which again has to be uh, uh, assessed and uh, because it's important that we are able to plan the hardware we require to cross these loops before we reach the aneurysm itself. Then we try to look and see are there vessels that arise from the base of the aneurysm lest we go and coil them uh, during coiling producing a stroke. So in all respects 3D angiogram 
has the answers to every single question or every single uh, query that we would have before doing an angiogra uh, before planning therapy and you can see this picture it shows you a 3d image it shows you the neck it shows you the relationship of the vessels and in reality we actually can spin this in any direction allowing us uh, exquisite detail about the the morphology and the anatomy of an aneurysm so let's start by understanding the neck and why is the neck important now these are three different types of aneurysm, a narrow neck and two wide neck aneurysms. A narrow neck, like you said, is easy to treat. But in a wide neck aneurysm, if you try the same strategy, the coils will prolapse out. So what we would do is to place a balloon, which is specifically made for this, inflate it, coil, deflate, and then you find the coils continue to remain within the aneurysm. In an unruptured aneurysm, we would prefer these stents and do the coiling. Here the stents act like a scaffold, it modifies the neck and also there is some change in the flow dynamics which promotes better healing. So have a look at this picture. This is an anterior communicating artery but with a narrow neck. Thus it would be easy to treat it. Like we mentioned, the, the aneurysm is coiled by placing a microcatheter across. This is a narrow neck aneurysm in the middle cerebral artery treated by the same technique. But look at this picture. This is an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. We try to coil it and you can see how easily the coils prolapse out. So obviously you need something to keep the coils in. The wire by the side of the coils show a little balloon that's on it. Now this balloon is called a remodeling balloon. They are hyper compliant balloons and as we do the procedure we keep inflating the balloon allowing us to keep the coils within the aneurysm. Here is a picture of the same case as we have the balloon across and how now you can see no prolapse of coils at all. And this is the end result. The coil mass very much inside the aneurysmal sac with normal patency of the vessel. And this is the final DSA picture and we must accept that this is good results which is possible by combining a balloon and using a catheter to do the coiling. Another example of a wide neck aneurysm on the ICA top which has been coiled successfully using the balloon remodeling technique. Another large neck posterior communicating artery aneurysm treated successfully by using the balloon technique. Now this is another situation where we have an aneurysm with a wide neck, aneurysm is not ruptured and in this case the preferred choice of refashioning the neck if I may use the word is using a stent. And uh, the next picture, this is the angiogram, the markers you see in that slide is actually showing the stent that is being loaded into the microcatheter and this is how the picture looks before and this is how it looks after when aneurysm is fully coiled and this is the follow-up angiogram showing no recanalization at the end of six months so obviously these are very very exciting forms of therapy where we are able to not just give treatment but give long-lasting and robust treatment. Here's another large posterior communicating artery with a very wide neck. This patient went for surgery. Surgery could not be done. And uh, this is before. This is the stent. And this is after showing total uh, reconstruction, sparing the parent artery and coiling of the aneurysm. The next topic we would be discussing is looking for the vessel that would arise from the base. 